Hey, this is Tobias from Test Results IO, and today I want to show you how to break a solution that is fully unit tested within five seconds. And it doesn't work at all afterwards, I can promise you that. And why did I come up with this small example here? Because I found exactly the same problem in a more complex solution on the customer side just last week. So I wanted to make you aware of a fact like that, and I want to highlight that you don't want to lose or miss out on, on, on full test automation. So test automation is more than just having unit tests. You need integration tests and you need end-to-end -end tests. And you'll see why within the next few minutes here. Okay, let's get rid of me and let's look into the code. You see that I do have an executable over here. The all unit tests are green executable, which is meant to simulate my program. Then I do have a data abstraction layer, which is used for all of my classes that I'm going to use. And I do have a unit test assembly that is used to host all of the unit tests. That being said, let's start developing. The idea is that we do have a, a cars account. So we want to check some accounts and the um, class account has a property, which is of the type metadata that doesn't exist yet, but we will create it in a few seconds. And that is get and set methods. So we generate the metadata type and all of that is required for this is that we do have a public daytime created property. That means our account has metadata that at least includes the created time when the account was created. In addition to that, we want to load some data. So we want to load the account and usually you receive that data from a database or from a, from a web API or from the local file system, whatever is there from the customer. In our case, we need to simulate that because I don't want to overburden you with code. So we do a static file and have our information that we're going to load in this static file. You can see I have two static properties. One is a JSON string that is referencing the date string. So the idea is to have a JSON file that says created, including the date string, created on the 1st of February, 2023. So let's load the metadata here, it's metadata is, and we load JSON convert, deserialize our string, and um, have all of the logic already written. So we walk through the code quickly. What we do is if we um, call load data, we will deserialize whatever we receive from a web API, a database, a file system, whatever you have. In our case, it's a static file. We will receive the JSON string, deserialize it to metadata, and the date that we expect to be in date time is the 1st of January 2023. So let's write a unit test for that. Um, what we do is we create an instance of the testy and say new account. So for the testy, we load the data. Actually, it's not much code, so we don't do a lot of exception handling in our code here. And the last one is that we assert that it is true that our testy metadata created date equals to the one that we expect. So that is from the static file. Um, let's let's do it like this: datetime dot pass from the static file the date string. That's it. So what we do is we create an instance to test on, load the data, and then assert that the date is correct. Once again, the JSON string consists of a created attribute and the date is coming from the date string, so it has to be equal. There's no way around that. Let's see what happens if we execute the um, test case. It's building in the background and you can see it is running, the test run finished, Everything is passed, nothing was skipped, all good. And you can see everything that I just wrote is passed. So I have a high coverage, close to 100% of the code that I've created, and everything is green. Okay, you know what? We take exactly this code over here, copy it in our program, and um, that should work, right? So if you look at that, um, there is no change in comparison to the, to the um, unit test code. We can we do have the unit test code over here. We do have the program code over here. We can actually um, look at it close to each other. It is the same code. And bring it back into the default window and we say like, play. 
and I get an exception. So apparently my code doesn't work in the environment in which I'm using it. And, and that is exactly my point. And that is exactly what happened on the customer side. It's like, um, they couldn't deserialize JSON strings anymore. So all of the tests actually passed. And you can be right, I'm missing a, a, a data provider and all of the stuff, but I left all of the stuff that is not important to show you what the real problem is out of this example. So what is happening here is actually that everything is working fine, but the problem is somebody set up the system where our program is running on to require the correct ISO data. And that is something that can be set from outside our program, outside, outside of our microservices. So you need to be aware of that. So even if all of your test cases, of your unit test cases are passed and you can run it without any problem, configuration will change from outside. And that is exactly something that you catch with integration tests and with full end-to-end -end tests. It was a pleasure to give you this example. The source code will be linked below the video and uh, see you soon. Bye.